A very warm welcome to this week, 60 minutes of analytical review of the big stories, topical issues and all the controversies around the world. I'm Somna Sambo. And in the headlines, more trouble brews in Labour Party as supporters look dazed at the turn of events as three factional chairmen battle for the soul of the party. And in the governing APC, the race for the speakership of the 10th Assembly takes a dramatic turn, an unexpected twist, as three top contenders step down for the party's preferred candidate, Tajuddin Abbas. We'll have analysis of all of this when we come back. There's more trouble inside Nigeria's third largest political party, the Labour Party, as supporters look dazed at the turn of events as three factional chairmen have been claiming leadership of the party amidst all that's been happening. And then, of course, we've seen um, all of this happening in a situation whereby they have been um, heading to the election petitions tribunal and claiming leadership of the party. Now, it's been a very tough deal for um, Julius Abure, who used to be the national chairman of the party until he became embattled, and then Alamidi Apapa. And then, of course, we just had the uh, latest being Kalistus Okafo, who has now gone to the Supreme Court claiming uh, he's the de facto leader of the party and not any of the previous two. All right, uh, we'll be having in the studio joining me right now to talk about this, uh, uh, Professor Oki Kichiku, who is a professor of human uh, capital development and a strategic uh, uh, management expert who help us understand what is going on at the moment. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Oki Kichiku, for joining us right here. Thank you. Yes, Glad to Prof. be here. Uh, so, talk to us about what's going on in uh, the Labour Party. We've seen all of these um, challenges here and there. There's a third person who has come out now. Are you a professor of strategic uh, management, um, human capital development? What exactly could be the uh, source of chaos that we're having in uh, Nigeria's third largest party? As someone who understands how the human minds work, how can three persons be claiming one position? No, it's fairly easy, but let's remove <clears throat> the matter from professorship and uh, strategic management. The issue is that it's a human situation and the crisis is coming at a point when the uh, Labour Party appears to be the major challenge facing or being faced by a strong power block. So let's take it one stage at a time. First, the Labour Party came on, has been in existence all of a sudden, he got a candidate who had uh, his own, uh, if you like, profile and credentials. And arguably, that candidate raised the public perception and image of that party, gave it a lot of mileage, and the campaign revolved more around the candidate than the party. Even at the time the party's manifesto came out, um, it didn't attract much attention because already there's a perception associated with the candidate it was, the party was putting forward. So all of that aside, everything went on to the surprise of everybody. This candidate got the third position, and there has been the argument that he actually won. Now, that being the case, and assuming it's true that the strong power block in the country is interested in, um, is interested in ensuring that nothing changes, it would mean that that party will be the target of a lot of con con conspiracies and controversies. How uh, Abure first got displaced was in itself rather curious and interesting. And if you look at the reflexes of our papa who came up, it was like more like a man. You've, the, the, golden, the green eagles have gone to play, <laughs> and the player from the green, uh, golden um, super eagles team trying to score on goal. I mean, it was difficult, difficult to understand what he was doing, except it was interpreted as enemy action. And so that's why it was readily assumed that a papa was sponsored, assumed that the sponsorship came from the APC, assumed that the whole idea is for him to destabilize the party, destabilize p and ensure that whatever forces are trying to put together, um, what do you call it, at the tribunal, is derailed. So that's an assumption, that's a perception, that's a suspicion, which appears to be very strong. Then I think more recently, not quite 48 hours, 
Abure got reaffirmed, I think, by the court. And everybody thought that, okay, this matter is over now. Let them sort out their internal differences. Now, there's this other one from Okafo. The question for me here is, is it possible then that having lost the Apapa angle, Okafo has again been recruited? Because I would want to understand what his issue is. Um, if he manages to, to, uh, to um, establish his ownership of that seat, it would mean that everything that transpired in the party up to this point does, cannot subsist, in which case the party had no candidates, etc. So the question of motive then arises, the question of timing, the possibility that is a trump card. Okay, we couldn't get this fellow to do it, now we've gotten this one. That's a strong perception. That's a perception I'm tempted to share, but I don't have any evidence to that effect. But it's clearly, it's a, it's a reasonable suspicion to hold, yes. All right. Well, I'd I like to just take us back to 2020. Actually, Abdul Kader Abdul Salam was the national chairman, chairman of the Labour Party before he died. And then, of course, this tussle started between Kalistu Sokafo, deputy national chairman then, and then uh, uh, Julius Aburi, secretary of the party and all of that, which now dovetailed into another deputy national chairman, mm -hmm. uh, Lamidi uh, 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 Papa coming into the fray and all of that. Uh, but... My biggest worry is if there is no structure in the Labour Party, because uh, in every political party, there's supposed to be a hierarchy, there's supposed to be a constitution that will guide transition period and all of that. Uh, but it looks like uh, the organizational structure of the Labour Party itself has, you know, uh, not been there all the while, and that's why we have all of these challenges. You are a professor of human capital uh, uh, management. Shouldn't there have been a structure, a succession structure to prevent what we have now? No, no, no. Not only shouldn't, there actually is. You see, we must make a distinction between the existence of a structure and compliance with the provisions. I think here is a challenge of compliance. If the law says that in the absence of the president, the vice president acts, and there happens to be a configuration of political forces that can prevent the vice president, it doesn't mean that there's no structure. Now, a party like Labour Party clearly has a constitution. I am convinced that within that constitution, you know what to happen when the chairman is not there. But if there's a tussle, then that's what we can. So it's not a question of there being no structure. It would seem that there's a, you know, insufficient balance of forces for equilibrium to exist. This is a table. There's a way we place objects on it, it will be stable. If it's loaded to one side, it won't be. And outside the, existence, the experience of the SDP, which is like what's going on in the, yeah, in the PDP yeah. now, <laughs> in the Labour, Labour Party, Party now. Now, they try to resuscitate uh, SDP. And uh, we had that meeting. It was held here in Abuja, the Sheraton. Agreements were reached. One thing was wrong, and as, as I was telling you at that meeting, all the people in attendance were Abuja people. Now, the parties had moribund, quite frankly, party chairmen in all the states. They were not present. Now, the moment you try to resuscitate the party, they will see that their meal ticket is about to be revived. Yeah. So they will suddenly become very active. Like in some of the states, it was a, a warehouse. Yeah, I mean, as they, as they, so some people refer to them as food is ready politicians. Thank you. So <laughs> that happened. And so after all the happy singing in Abuja, when the people now, the new development, the new SDP went to become active in the state, when I tried to, there was no, the, the person there said, no, you people met in Abuja and said uh, there were no chairmen here. So that kind of thing. Now, Labour Party had been there. What was it laboring? It was barely audible. It was barely visible. The only time I think... Yeah, but they had a, a governor then. Precisely. Uh, former governor Mimiko, Mimiko and all of that. And then, and then I remember Andy Obaivan took their ticket yeah. in um, Anambra, used the ticket at that time and all of that. So he didn't have that. It was sufficient unto itself, functioning within its area of competence, but without enough national spread to be consolidated all over the country. Now, Peter Obi came. He didn't follow the usual party patterns. Campaigns are organized in um, stadia. A lot of money is brought. People will share the money, put others in buses, and the whole the stadium will be filled, and it will assume it's a party rally. It isn't. Now, he wasn't doing that. He was going to real people, real institutions, negotiating. So expenditure was very low. Penetration was higher. Conversations were not party thin. It wasn't, they were not buying massive newspaper pages, which was part, part. So the entire campaign thing changed. And if anybody who is strong in the media knows, he will tell you that this is one of the 
the election period was only worse for Nigerian media in terms of expenditure on media. Yeah. Because content was now being sought. B2B was, be, come and talk to us. Others, the whole idea is, can we pay five, ten, let's take five million, not ten. <laughs> it didn't happen this last time. It was a hammer time season for the media. Yeah. Now, all of that changed. Now, so it wasn't making some people in the Labour Party happy. We know they give shisha. I think that's the expression. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, is, they don't give any money yes, at they all. They're not giving money to anybody. But you see, it didn't have to be a mantra. It was a fact associated with him as a person, not with the reflexes of the party. When you say labor, yes, it's labor. It doesn't mean that labor is full of angels. So there were people who, in spite of the presumed um, um, aridity of labor, were actually hoping that that would be their harvest season. It didn't happen. Then the way the campaign... He was seen as a stoic politician. Totally so. <laughs> too stoic. He wants to travel. He travels with three people. They say, yes, Peter B is coming, Peter B is coming. And the, 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 the host is waiting for him, only to find out he's one who walked in with three people. No. So all of that began to build into a perception of the likely challenge that will arise with a government that insists on focusing on what needs to be done. Okay. Now, he didn't win that election. Now they've gone to the tribunal. It would seem that those against whom he's gone to the tribunal are so frightened. And so the best thing is to break the ranks. Spend as much as you can. Find those who can be bought. Create confusion if you can, etc. I imagine that part of what we are seeing is in connection with all of that. Now, in all of this, we've seen members of the Labour Party, uh, you know, perplexed. So what's, what's going on? Because we never thought our political party was like this. We follow Peter Obi and all of that. But the worst of it all is that it's beginning to affect the fortunes of the party. Just yesterday, there was that controversial judgment. Uh, though lawyers are divided, some people saying that, look, you cannot remove a, a governor Election. who has been elected and then um, who is said to be sworn in because every other court doesn't have jurisdiction except the, the uh, election petitions tribunal. tribunal. Uh, now, that's talking about Abia State, Abia State uh, Governor-elect yeah. Alex Oti and all of that. Now, he's laughed it out. But there are those who are still looking at it and said that, look, this may actually drive Alex Oti out of Labour Party if he gets into government because if he sees that uh, the Labour Party is not settling his issues, I mean, he would want to look for a safe nest. Uh, just suppose this with the problems that they are having, with the drama that took place with Lamidia Papa mm. at the, uh, the, uh, the, tribunal. the yeah, tribunal and all of that. Mm. If you were a Labour Party member, how would you be taking all of this? First, I'm not a Labour Party yeah, member. Yeah, I mean, you're not, but I'm just <laughs> but saying that from the perspective of a Labour Party if member. If I'm a Labour Party member, it will depend on my level of consciousness and political appreciation. Now, if, what, if Alexis reflexes is to jump into another party, he doesn't deserve to be governor. He's not a party member, he's a Bukaneer. So if he's the Alex Oti, I know he's not going anywhere. Because if you have challenge in your party and as a leader, what you do is you mend it. You don't relocate because your roof is leaking. That's when to fix it and claim and insist on the ownership of that address. So, and he's clearly not somebody who gives up easily. So that option is not on the table at all. The court, uh, there's also the official statements, I assume official, that no, it was not a sack. Yes, I mean, that's government. why we're still probing mm -hmm. that uh, statement also, which said that, look, the court never or, uh, issued this order Specific and all of that. Order that yes, is, yes, yes. Mm, but now, looking, like I said, it depends on my level of consciousness as a party member. This is also a period for political education for members of the party. It's never a tea party. These are always struggles. So a winnowing process is going on. People who came with a lot of excitement is going to be our turn. Now we'll go in and all of that. When it doesn't happen day one, day two, sobriety comes in, yeah. clarity comes in, discipline comes in. We didn't also take place. Those who were waiting, they had their spoon in their pocket all along, but they said they were not hungry. <laughs> yeah. Now the spoon is staying there. for. They, they see another plate being paid, food being served as well. They run over there. Now that is nothing to be, nothing to be worried, worried about. For the Labour Party as a party, is it really cohesive? Throughout and in the process of everything leading to the election, there was a challenge of cohesion, no question about that. Where the issue is, I ask myself, if I'm a member, a Labour Party member, what I will ask myself is, is it possible that why there's so much attempt to destabilize us is because we have something they're afraid of? Hmm. That's the real concern. Mm. Is it possible that the Especially case... Especially with the threats to actually yes. withdraw, withdraw you, know, you know, the cases. Yes. And a lot of uh, Nigerians were surprised yes. that Lamidia Papa yes. was asking they lawyers, handling, yeah. That. And we're like, what exactly? So Does he even know the, the security implication of, of that? that? Now, so the issue is this. 
the, there must be something truly, truly alarming that the Labour Party has that's making those working against it want to destabilize it. Of course, the primary suspect is APC. That is terribly... Look, this is a man who came third. So why is he the target? There's a wrestling contest in uh, Bakaliki Junction. They say, oh, he's a Peter be telling his brothers to destabilize <laughs> Nigeria. Everything, you're looking for things to... Why him? He wasn't the only one who contested. He didn't come second. He came third. Yeah, but that, that, the crisis in the Labour Party, doesn't, doesn't it also show uh, the lack of the ability of the presidential candidate to unite the party? If he can't unite the party from within, how could he have united Nigerians if he had been elected president? First, it's Nigerians that will elect him. The party is a vehicle. Now, within the party, you do not... Look at, uh, look at PDP before the elections. Atiku was running for president, right? We came lost and said, look, how you should go. Atiku refused. Tambuwal was uh, the one who stepped down for him. San Tambuwal was campaign chairman, DG. Reconfigure it like this. I'm running for the ubership of my town. And uh, the town is full of fractions. But the other part of the town is quarreling with the other part. I want to be Oba. And three of my wives are quarreling. For six months, I've not resolved it. Even my respective in-laws are picking on me. You can't make me the Oba. That was a challenge with the PDP. Whereby the matter could have been resolved, at or you could have stepped down because you must ask, what is this man's electoral value, either in his mm. state or at the federal level? Yeah. Secondly, Tambuwal didn't have to be DG because by making him DG, you're inheriting the annoyance of those who are angry <laughs> that he, he stepped. Do you get it? Of course. They could have made him head your DG, who is mm. practically Tambuwal. So you secure all of that, win your election, call her. You, but you as, as leader, you must come out and say, look, we are not asking are you to step down because of the complaint. Our constitution supports it. But in response to perception, equity, natural justice, and good conscience, are you as a statesman and with my endorsement has I agreed to step? All of that. You create the necessary room. So it's a different thing. They don't know. Yeah, I mean, and it's not only uh, the uh, Labour Party and PDP. Mm -hmm. Even Abga is facing the same issue. Very uh, but so. some people are beginning no, to no, look no, at it. I want that. to check the, the, the Labour Party angle. Okay. Remember, there's a slight dysfunctionality in the case of the Labour Party. There's P2B and his credentials, practically autonomous. Then there's the fact that he can't contest the election except he's in a political party. So the yeah. Labour Party came in. Now, the identities, interests, and all of that that define the Labour Party, no matter how vague they were, did not quite coalesce into Peter B himself and his own processes. So that, those are some of the things that you then began to play out. Because assuming he won the election, you won't be seeing this. Yeah. The, his actions will immediately take the template for how the state should run. Take Anambra when he won election as a, as a governor. I mean, it was a state, it was a no man's land. Then he came home and found, for the third time, every night they will kill a cow. He said, why do you kill a cow here? <laughs> he said, oh, Your Excellency, you know, some people may come. He said, come here, is there a restaurant? Please, stop it. Now, with that kind of reflex, the, stand, the things will be established immediately. That's where real leadership comes in. But, yeah, but, but isn't Obi failing to provide leadership at the moment? How could they get to court, you know, throwing fisticuffs here and there? And people are saying that, look, Obi could have called the obedience to order not to attack an Apapa. And, of course, Apapa already has the blame for not behaving like an elder, too, See, in all of this. Where is the presidential candidate? That's no. what people are asking for. They're Shouldn't asking, he be showing leadership? They're asking the wrong question. If three, myself, yourself, and about 23 other people... Go to ambush somebody in the court. Is somebody going to hold the chairman of our eyes responsible? No. This is what you call a, a mob action. So when you say Peter controlled the obedience, where does that happen? Did Zeke not tell off his followers because he found out what they do? You see, this yeah, level of, of the Zeke's movement yeah, then. This level of illiteracy like at the level of political conversation at mm -hmm. our level is disgraceful. Mm -hmm. That you should expect Peter to be to reign in uh, obedience. Obedience that came out to vote, carried out rallies without asking for funding from the party, independently excited people, many of them misguided oh, okay. because of I, what they I, wanted. I try to round off this conversation, Prof. Round off? Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> this um, uh, Kalisu Sokafo, because he is saying that uh, I have also asked the court to recognize my party's membership list because the list is with me and could be verified, saying that the list sent him by Julius Abure, the list sent him by Lamidia Papa. Papa, all of these ones should be rejected by the court, including Peter Obi, because according to him, immediately after the death of Abdul Kadir Abdul Salam in 2020, mm. uh, the late national chairman of the party, that he was the rightful person and not 
all of these persons. So the list submitted, according to him, did not include uh, the names. some of yeah, mm -hmm. the names. All these people, they were just people who jumped from PDP or other okay. political parties. Let me move, you, let move from law that? to the policies of it. If actually the constitution provides, he was chairman, de deputy vice, deputy chairman. Yes. If the constitution of the party, the party provides that deputy chairman should take over, and that process was violated and he didn't take over, it will mean that there are some questions to answer in law, and there has to be a judgment to that effect. If that judgment is indicative of the fact that, look, this is a man should have been chairman, he wasn't, you people did not follow due process, it will subsist. Now, if you come to the politics of it, what interest will drive Okafo, even at this point, to want to argue that list and take it to court? Is it to serve the interests of the party? If it is, your candidate is number three, he's at the tribunal. There's a possibility, no matter how slim, that he would win. Does this serve the interest of the party for you to have bought his candidacy by insisting on a list? So those are the things you then bring. You see, you see that this is not party politics. This is not party activity. This is a negotiable disagreement that, listen, just like in football, you know, you've, you've beaten somebody, you fell, the referee decides uh, play advantage. Okay, since you still have the ball, he lets you go on. Now, that's what would be expected of an Okafo. So, the suspicion and thinking is that there must be some very strong interest driving his desire to annihilate his own party about all its interests. Because if you've got your list, approve what are you going to do with it nothing yeah, you well, go and that same issue is the one that uh, <laughs> was uh, supposed to have affected uh, you know, alex oti because the claim in that, in that uh, uh, because there's another labor party's state chairman that, that took that to issue court. yeah in kano saying that look all these people that came into the party, they came in when INEC, when a list had already through been submitted door, to INEC. Yes, yes, <laughs> through the back door. A list had already been submitted to INEC and it didn't contain the names of all these people. Now, what are the solutions uh, you can proffer as a professor of human capital well, you management? You keep talking you this know? professorship. Leave yeah. it out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this, is a this, this is human. Yes, it's you, human. But you see, I don't like bringing the academic element oh. because it creates the illusion that professors are the solution. When you, the average traditional ruler is smarter than most professors, he didn't go to university. So that we deal with the issue as it is. So some people don't think they are not competent to make interventions. Yeah, but now, you, you have, you have, uh, you trying, know. I've been involved. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can say that. to understand the human mind <laughs> as to when it comes to strategic management. Because this issue is not only in the Labour Party. We've seen it in the PDP. We've seen Abga, Abga having two national chairmen and all of that. And these issues are still in court. What is the problem with our politics? Level of political maturity is as simple as that. It also shows itself in the reaction. You know, some people got very angry about the court. Oh, we want this result. Three things must be acknowledged. Number one, that there are rules of engagement in a democracy. Those rules include the fact that if you lose, you don't declare your private result, you take it to the next level, which is the court. So the courts are part of the democratic enterprise. That's number two. Number three, when you have confusion like this, that's what you call intra-party struggle for interest within the party there are factions i want you to become minister because when you become minister i'll be wearing your contracts this person wants you to become minister because there's a list of development projects which if you carry out will affect the lives of the people mm. these are factions struggling yeah. now whichever faction emerges victorious drives his interest now you and i may worry about morality equity responsible leadership that's one of driving some people so when somebody says, can you imagine what they are doing? I can imagine yeah. what they are doing because I know where they are coming from. They All are right. not interested in the common good. <laughs> <laughs> Many of these people are not interested in the common good. Uh, Professor Oke okay, Kechuku is uh, someone who has studied uh, polity very well. You've been in strategic uh, engagements here and there, both within the polity and outside. And you've helped us to understand the psychology of these politicians. And uh, it's very, very apparent now that there are some other Forces, <laughs> and forces, and interest. uh, which uh, a lot of supporters may not see because mm. I mean, many of these supporters are perplexed in one way or the other. But we must thank you immensely for helping us to deepen the conversation as to what exactly is happening with our political parties, beginning with the Labour Party. We must thank you so much for being with us. Mm.